Hi YouTube, I am back. I'm a little sluggish, I had a large lunch today, larger than usual and my body is running a little slow and the sun is making me sleepy and I just emerged from a connected meditation. Today's lesson is lesson 130 and I'm going to read a bit from it. Lesson 130, it is impossible to see two worlds. I'll read a bit and then talk about what comes up for me in this moment. In the beautiful sunshine of Northern California, bright blue, sunshiny day. Hopefully you can hear, hear me okay, see me okay, connect with me okay, be with me okay. Perception is consistent. What you see reflects your thinking and your thinking but reflects your choice of what you want to see. Your values are determiners of this for what you value you must want to see. Believing what you see is really there. No one can see a world his mind has not accorded value and no one can fail to look upon what he believes he wants. Yet who can really hate and love at once? Who can desire what he does not want to have in reality? And who can choose to see a world of which he is afraid? Fear must make blind, for this its weapon is. That which you fear to see, you cannot see. Love and perception thus go hand in hand, but fear obscures in darkness what is there. What then can fear project upon the world? What can be seen in darkness that is real? Truth is eclipsed by fear, and what remains is but imagined. Yet what can be real in blind imaginings of panic born? What would you want that this is shown to you? What would you wish to keep in such a dream? Fear has made everything you think you see. All separation, all distinction and the multitude of differences you believe make up the world, they are not there. Love's enemy has made them up. Yet love can have no enemy and so they have no cause, no being and no consequence. They can be valued but remain unreal. They can be sought, but they cannot be found. Today we will not seek for them, nor waste this day in seeking what cannot be found. And elsewhere it says, except a little part of hell is real, and you have damned your eyes and cursed your sight, and what you will behold is hell indeed. I've been very... I'm going to take you on a walk. You're going to get to hear the ducks, I'm sure, and... See what emerges as I wonder. It is impossible to see two worlds. I haven't been doing the lessons and I haven't been on this channel for a couple of weeks. And part of the reason for that is that I've been placing my attention in this world and it's pretty impossible to do this course and to do these lessons when my preoccupation is in this world. And there's been good reasons in my personal life for that, but I do notice that distinction that it is impossible to see two worlds because when I value this world and when I value the things in this world I'm making it real and I'm therefore pushing true reality away because those two worlds are so diametrically opposed that I cannot place value in one and value the other if I'm valuing the material realm of time and space I cannot value the infinite and the eternal simultaneously and what I just read in the lesson goes really deep. It teaches me that I am entirely responsible for what I see and that there is a part of me that wants to see it because it said quite clearly there in what I read, you can't see what you're afraid of. So when I look at this world of war, of terror, of madness, of conflict, of separation, of damage, of poverty, of dis-ease, of ill health, of suffering. I'm not afraid of that. I made that in my ego state. What I'm afraid of is the alternative. It's the true reality. The oneness, the closeness, the love, the connection, the never-ending orgasmic bliss of God. That's what I'm truly afraid of. And so I hide out in this world 
this prison of the senses. I hide out here to escape from that fear. I'm responsible. I being the biggest self, the one that we all are. I am responsible. I come here and I play a, a character in a bad movie. And I believe it is real. And I believe that the people that populate it are real. And I believe that the environment that surrounds me is real. And it's not. But at the core of it is the essence of reality, is the love, is the closeness is the emotional intimacy. At the core of it is the truth. And that's what I connect to when I go into that meditative space and when I release this world and the things that seem to be of value in this world, that's what I connect to. It is impossible to see two worlds simultaneously and I'm returning to a phase where I emphasize and focus on the true reality that this course continues to guide me back to, which doesn't mean that I neglect the things of this world, but at the same time I can spend a lot of my seeming time here overlooking them and looking above the horizon to the true reality that we all share. I love you all so much. Subscribe to the videos if you have not already done so. See you all again very soon, much sooner than two weeks.